May I speak the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Gospel of John is a different sort of book. It's one of the four books that we call a gospel, but it's not one of the books that we call the synoptic gospel. Those are Mark, Matthew, and Luke. It's different in style and presents stories that are not found in the other gospels. In our lectionary each year, we focus on one particular gospel, but there is no year where we focus on the gospel of John. We might initially think that this makes the Gospel of John a little less important. It certainly makes it a little more mysterious. But John ju does pop up during the lectionary at crucial points. We hear the Gospel of John at Christmas. We hear the Gospel of John during Lent. We hear the Gospel of John during Holy Week at Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and we hear the Gospel of John during the Easter season. While it's a different Gospel, it's a very special one. John just doesn't tell us stories about Jesus. He puts theological interpretation into the events. And John's Gospel it's one of the few ones where Jesus is repeatedly identified as the Son of God. And the entire Gospel of John asks us not just to hear the story about Jesus, but to really consider who Jesus is and who God is. For John, the good news is the revelation of God in Jesus. What Jesus reveals about himself he also reveals about God. For the writer of the Gospel of John, the incarnation is the key to his theology and message. And it is the incarnation that is emphasized in this reading that we have this morning. This prologue, as it's called, is one of the most challenging texts in the New Testament. When read well, it's beautiful to hear, but it can also be very difficult to understand. So I want to take a moment and try to break the prologue down into its parts to see if it makes more sense. Okay? So we have the beginning, which begins with, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Does that remind you of something? Genesis. John is rewriting the creation story. And in his creation story, he is telling us that the Word, which he will go on to identify as Jesus, was there. And if we we'll remember that first creation story in Genesis, what does God do to create? He speaks the Word. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so John is putting Jesus at even the very beginning of time and before it. He says that Jesus was what cre was how the world was created as the Word of God. And that Jesus was, was the light that was created by God. Then we get a section that talks about John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came to witness and testify to the light. Now that's pretty familiar from our other gospel readings. We always see John as a key figure in the early ministry and life of Jesus. From the nativity stories of John to John baptizing Jesus, which we will hear about next Sunday. So we've moved from a world before time down to first century Judea with John the Baptist. And then we get the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. So what's happening there? The light of the word from the first passage is now about to enter into the world. This is John's nativity story. He was in the world and he came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. 
he came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. Jesus was born into the world and would be rejected by his own people, and that rejection would lead to a cross and to crucifixion. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. That is the moment when God enters into the world and becomes human. What John's prologue gives us is a view of two worlds. There's the eternal world, the sphere of the cosmic word of God moving about and causing creation. And then there's a view of the very temporal, real world of John the Baptist, the world of material items and flesh and blood. And what this intersection does is it takes these two spheres and slams them together. The nativity isn't a sweet pastoral scene with shepherds and angels and stars and a baby Jesus. It's the coming together of the infinite with the finite. It's the eternal entering into a broken world. A God revealing himself in a way never known before. And it's the story of Jesus' ministry, that revealing of Jesus, that is also a revealing of God. This is the beginning. What John is telling us in this prologue, in all of his fancy language, is something exciting is happening. Something new. Something that needs to be proclaimed and witnessed to. There may not be angels or shepherds, but the gospel writer is telling us that we need to pay attention. At the time that the Gospel of John was written, we believe it's one of the latest Gospels that's written, probably around 90, it was dangerous. John was writing from a community that had been excommunicated from the Jewish community. After the temple was destroyed, um, the Jewish religious community began to exclude Jesus followers that would later become Christians. So John and his followers had most likely suffered that excommunication, driven out from the temple. And so they have entered into a new world, a world not anchored by a Jewish faith. And even in that world of transition and uncertainty, John presents this extraordinary event and invites us into the story and says that here, even now, without the temple, without our Jewish faith, it is an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus. Standing here today, I tell you, it is still an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus. We sit here on December 30th, a few, way, few days away from a new year. We're a few days past the supposed end of the world. Congratulations, we made it again. <laughs> we live in a world that is ever more interconnected. We know more about our world today and how it works than we ever did. I can pick up my iPhone and make a video call to my brother on the other side of the country. I'm here to tell you we live in the future. We don't have flying cars yet. I'm still disappointed by that. <laughs> but we live in the future. And it is an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus. We also still live in a time of uncertainty. War and unrest in the Middle East violence here at home, innocent lives lost, tornadoes in my hometown on Christmas Day, financial uncertainty, unemployment, acts of hatred, the ever-impending fiscal cliff. But I still say to you, it's an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus. 
Within the body of the church, we are fractured into ever smaller denominations. Within our own church, people are troubled over current issues of theology and human sexuality. Folks are fighting and leaving. The Church of England is in turmoil over whether or not women should be bishops. Our traditional faith is faced with challenges of this world, and it is uncertain times. But it is still an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus, and certainly an exciting time to be an Episcopalian. Here at St. Michael's, we are at our own point of transition. Any time clergy changes, it's a time of stress. Questions come up about how to continue ministries, how to keep church attendance up, who will be here to be do the service on Sunday. But even now, it's an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus, to be an Episcopalian, and to be a member of St. Michael's. But why? John tells us clearly, Jesus, the Word, eternal, has become flesh. And with that, we received truth and grace and became the children of God. To say that it is an exciting time isn't wide-eyed optimism. It isn't ignoring the reality of the difficulties we face in the world, in the church, and at St. Michael's. It is a belief in the transformative, cosmic, mind-blowing event that we celebrate at Christmas. The Word, God, love, light, and life came to us. And we, as children of God, as recipients of this wonderful gift, have a job to do. We must pick up the work of John the Baptist. In the Gospel of John, John the Baptist is never called the Baptist. He is more rightly called John the Witness. <coughs> In the prologue, John stands and points to and bears witness to the light coming in the world. And in the midst of all the trouble of first century Judea, John stands pointing to the one that was greater than he, that was Jesus. Today, as members of St. Michael's, as Episcopalians, as followers of Jesus, we have the same job. We must continue to point to Jesus, to show Jesus to the world. Jesus, in revealing himself, revealed God, and it's our job to make sure that the world knows about Jesus. What we accomplish here in Beans and Rice, Baby Closet Ministry, the money we raise, the things we send to Sawyerville, the stockings given at Christmas, all this is done not to show how wonderful we are, but how wonderful Jesus is. It is to witness to the love of Jesus that came to us at Christmas. We don't ignore the bad things in the world. We don't turn a blind eye to violence and pain. We don't pretend that the Episcopal Church doesn't have problems. But as followers of Jesus, we do not dwell on those problems. We bravely reach our hands out into the world with love and grace and reconciliation and invite others to walk with us. We meet the darkness of this world with faith in Jesus. As followers of Jesus here and now, we stand on the edge of the darkness of this world in the light of the kingdom of God. We stand there with faith and hope and simply point towards Jesus, knowing that he is the light that shines in the darkness and will not be overcome by the darkness. One of the first things that I learned about St. Michael's when I came here was your mission statement. Loving God, loving people, loving life. Short, sweet, simple, to the point. And it describes what St. Michael's does so well. And it describes what we are called to do as Christians. To love, 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 and love some more. 
And as long as we keep doing that, we're doing fine. We live in the future. The possibilities are endless in where we might go. It is truly an exciting time to be a member of St. Michael's. It is an exciting time to be an Episcopalian. And it is truly an exciting time to be a follower of Jesus. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Amen.